I uh, wanted to ask you, since we've already referenced the fact that you've won these um, double daggers in England, you've always been, you're a huge bestseller in England. Are you, on, you're on the Times list right now mm. for Cold Moon. Why is it that you think the Brits take so dramatically well to your books? Because it doesn't happen to every, to every best-selling American author at all. I think there are two reasons. Um, one, the, um, the, the classic British mystery, and I, I consider people like Barbara Vine uh, slash Ruth Rendell, uh, uh, P.D. James, uh, Ian Rankin, uh, Peter Robinson, although he lives in Canada, he writes, uh, you know, he's a Yorkshire boy. He is boy. British, he's from Yorkshire, he's a Yorkshire so he Yorkshire counts, boy, right. sure. uh, and, and so many, John le Carré, I, I consider them artists. I mean, I think they are literary writers. Uh, their insights into human psychology and crime are, they continue to blow me away. Um, what you don't see quite so much of over there are the rather elaborately constructed, uh, plot-driven books of the sort that I do. Um, someone like John Connolly, who's a friend of mine and a, and a superb Great writer, guy. wonderful, wonderful writer, he, um, he grabs you by the, well, I'll say by the throat, and he races you right <laughs> through the story. That's not what you meant. <laughs> okay, but you, we'll stick with that that anatomy. And uh, for you, a family you, show, you just, right? You just can't you can't stop yourself from wondering what's going to happen next. And yet it does. The books uh, don't really have that. What I do, which you know may lack psychological insight, but they are a roller coaster. I mean, this, so I think in that sense, uh, my books are. I won't say unique, but they're in in the minority. They're, they're, they're a bit of a rarity, and that's refreshing, and I think they like that. I think the other important reason is very practical. I've been with the same publisher there uh, since the beginning, Hotter and Stoughton, one of the big, uh, big traditional publishers, and they have... Um, they have worked very, very hard to sell my books. They do very creative marketing. Um, they play on elaborate book tours, and they... Right. Uh, they, they uh, they recognize that this is a, a business, as you do, you know, you do too. This, we are not, none of us are artists, and we can't afford to be artists. We have to know who buys books, why they buy books, where they buy a certain type of book, um, what the price points are, how to market, how to advertise, and so forth. And so I think we just um, have lessons there about taking the product and getting it into the hands of the I'm sure you're right, and the fact they've now been bought by Hachette, the big French giant, yeah. it's gonna, I'm gonna be really interested to see how Hachette is able to manage Time Warner and Hotter Headline and whatever they manage how in many, France. How many publishers are left? I think well, three of us or so? Well, I'm not all that impressed by Bertelsmann, and so I'm, you know, here comes the second you know, right. European-based right. giant. Right. And in fact, interestingly enough, all American publishing companies, the big ones, are now owned by European conglomerates. You know, Pearson mm, owns right, right, sure, um, sure. Your your company. No, actually, I guess Viacom was not, but it's split right. up. And who knows whether Simon and Schuster will, in fact, you know, go on the block to one of these. It's, it, there's just a huge movement towards consolidation. And I think you're right. I mean, it's it's been a great marketing exercise. But I uh, I really have often speculated on why some writers work in one, mm. you know, um, environment and not in another. And in general, I think the Brits prefer books that are claustrophobic in mm. many ways. Ian's kind of an exception, really, mm -hmm. if you think about it. His, you know, it's Edinburgh and all, but right. he's, he's more of a bloke right. kind of guy. Oh, uh, Rebus is um, definitely a bloke. He is, yeah. I think um, I'd like to hang out with He's a lot Rebus. more like Michael right. Connolly than yeah. he is like, you know, some other British authors. And of course, John Connolly, being Irish, is kind of in a world of his own mm -hmm. and is publishing a book called um, The Lost Book or something this fall. That's not a mystery, which I'm really looking forward really? to reading. Oh, that's yeah. going to be interesting. Um, but I think that um, because it's a country of 55 million people crammed into a, a geographic space no bigger than Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of um, intimacy issues, claustrophobia, there's a lot of suppressed rage, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in a much more condensed and layered society. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their books reflect that. And I think that oh, you think are one true. of those mm -hmm. rare authors that, um, as you say, maybe it's like a vacation, mm -hmm. you know, because your your books are much more open, they're much more plot driven, they're right, not, right. Mm -hmm. they're not yeah, well, that's, that that's, that's, uh, that's a very good point. In some other countries, as we've, you know, we've said before, 
can't can't sell to save my soul. It's just well, very curious. Well, I've noticed there's kind of a cluster of Germany, Italy. I'm sorry, Germany, England, and the Scandinavian countries mm -hmm. tend to run in that Where in I that do vein. Very, all of which I do very well. Right, yeah. and then Italy tends to you yeah. know more be more American, and mm -hmm. it's very difficult to sell books with a French background at all yeah. in America. That's never never really clicks. So Donna Leon works here, but you right. know a French based author doesn't. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see that there are some. Uh, authors that are uh, Italian authors particularly because I go there quite a bit that are being translated now. They are. As a matter of fact, and, and you mentioned Iceland and you know mm -hmm. Arnold uh, Indritason mm -hmm. right. won the, uh, the the British Crime Writing Prize before they took it away. Um, and, and I think it's fascinating. I also think our time's up. I I'm so sorry. I, and we could keep going on and on as And always. we often do. <laughs> right. And, 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 but interestingly, we talked about most of the topics. We, we tend to digress quite a bit, don't we, Barbara? But we, well, uh, we I do. thought we were going to get into the history of Chicago for a while. Well, though, sorry. I just was so, that's the one that surprise so, that you've given isn't me. Isn't that funny? Anyway, yeah. thank you, dear. Just well, so much. Well, thank you as always. A pleasure to have you. And thank you all for watching this episode even with his soapbox moments of the criminal calendar <laughs> with us. <laughs>